Hello, Animation Fanatic here. Well, I'm finally back from my trip and from my long review hiatus. And, yeah, yeah, finally back <laughs> after after all of this time. And I, oh, wow, I'm so late with so many reviews. And I'm going to be extra late if I don't get them in, uh, at least at least by tomorrow. It will, tomorrow my time, or some, sometime. But that being said, let's not waste any time. I'm going to start off with one that I just saw recently, last week's episode of Total Drama All-Stars. Total Drama All-Stars Episode 6, Egg... It involves eggs. <laughs> so anyway, the vultures are riding high after their victory, but they are uh, giving Cameron a kind of a hard time. Courtney wants to get rid of him. Heather is wants to off him. Alejandro's trying to get him onto his side, and Gwen's being nice to him. Whatever. Um, anyway, back with the hamsters, Mike is struggling with his multiple personality disorder and the malevolent one. I still maintain that I'm not really that intimidated by a guy whose main purpose seems to be breaking other people's stuff. Kind of a downgrade from, I don't know, eliminating your teammates, um, being a wit, uh, helping, uh, I'm sorry, uh, orchestrating breakups, uh, you know, being nasty to other people, legitimately nasty. Yeah, I'm going to give this time, but I'm not really liking this subplot too much. It's it's interesting in theory, but it's it's not developing anywhere or going much of anywhere that I care for. And I'll I'll get into that in a sec. I'll get, I'll, I'll be I'll get back to that. But yeah, um Sierra is not doing too well in this episode and if you were anno even I who was not annoyed by her in the first couple of episodes She's she's starting to get on my nerves now, <laughs> because of just yeah her separation from Cody and her lack of a PDA is, and or cell phone or whatever is making her kind of snap and she's calling people Cody she's thinking of she's saying Cam Cody <laughs> it's it's hilarious um but but yeah it's annoying at the same time um oh yeah and Duncan will deal in this episode with a subplot of. Well, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? He keeps saying, oh, I'm bad, I'm evil, and then he does good things. Um, a little forced, seeing as he was kind of, he was, in previous seasons, he could be a real jerk, but occasionally do something decent. And and this is just, I'm not saying this isn't funny, but, because it, it is, it is legitimately funny, but it's not as clever as when he would do good things in Total Drama Island. When he did stuff there that was nice to other people, it was legitimately kind of heartwarming. Here, it's just it's just kind of played for laughs. I, I'm not saying one is okay. Total Drama Island did a better job, but this is this is funny, and it's better than him just being an all-out jerk like he was in Action and World Tour. <laughs> Harold, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I, I mentioned oh last subplot uh, no. Two more subplots. Gwen and Cam sort of team up a little bit. Z three more subplots. Zoe's trying to help Mike through his multiple personality stuff. And finally, Alejandro and Heather are trying to are team up and try to wonder if they can trust each other. Uh, there's a little bit of Scott and Courtney in this, but they don't really do too much. Yeah, except for kind of hang out together. Um, so, yeah. I, the reason I mention all of these subplots is that, that this is what the episode is kind of focusing on. It bounces around between everybody instead of focusing on just a couple of them. Or Yeah, it goes it goes kind of everywhere. But I'll, I'll get back to that in, in one second. Let's go to the main challenge, which is a throwback to the previous season. Uh, apparently a lot of the mutants weren't demutinized. They were moved to a location on the island behind closed doors. Now, Chris tells the teammates that tells the teams that they're going to the fun zone or something, and he locks them in there. Uh, and yeah, th so the basic goal of the game is you have to get, se I think it's seven eggs from the various creatures and put them in your basket. If it hatches, just make sure it stays in there. Also, the other the teams can take eggs from each other, but that doesn't really factor in too much except to have people guarding the eggs. Um, by the way, Chef is... I, 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 I hadn't noticed this before, but Chef is in these episodes, but he's not saying too much or doing quite as much as I'd hoped. Kind of like last season. But 
no worries. He always manages to come back and do some kind of stuff or some torturous challenge for everybody, <laughs> which is always a lot of fun. Um, but anyway, the team set off to do their egg thing, uh, a lot of people joining together in little pairs to go off and find it, and, ho and hilarity ensues, but, but good hilarity. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty funny, there's good physical comedy in here, and while the subplots can get kind of slow-ish, they manage to keep you modestly engaged, but it's really the comedy you're going here for. Um, by the way, I I'm just going to mention this, we find out that Chris's favorite plant, Larry, is actually a female plant, Lori, um, yeah, and there's a little reference joke made here, uh, I'm not going to say what it is, because it's kind of creepy, no, it's not kind of creepy, it's very creepy, so I'm going to let you figure out what that is, you have been warned, that's, you might want to scrub your brain out with soap after that or something. I don't know. But anyway, the teams are going back and forth, various couples dealing with various subplots. I guess the better one, in my opinion, is Alejandro and Heather trying to go back and forth, trying to compete with each other, and Mike and Zoe trying to deal with the malevolent one and wondering whether or not they can trust each other or depend on each other. Those are the best ones. The others are either played for laughs or not that great. By the way, Heather's doing some smart thinking, running around and convincing the various pairs of the villainous vultures that they want to vote out a certain person. She tells Scott and Courtney that that Alejandro wants is trying to get people to vote out Scott, and Scott and Courtney don't like that, and then she goes to Gwen and Cameron and says, oh, they're trying to vote out Cameron. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the villainous vultures look like they're going to win at the last minute, uh, but I believe... Oh yes, one of the conte contestants, I think it's either Alejandro or, no it's not Alejandro, I think it's Heather, throws an egg trying to beat Mike and Zoe who are coming in with a huge basket, not basket, nest full of them. Uh, the egg breaks unfortunately and has a flying, one of those flying goats that breathes fire and it flies away, not after, after attacking Cameron. Um, one more thing I wanted to mention, people really kind of pick on Cameron on the villainous vultures and sort of the newbies, um, but that's strange because you think they'd want him kind of as an ally because remember, in the Canadian version of the show, Cameron won the competition, and as far as I'm concerned, even though he didn't win in the States, I know more people voted for him, and as, like I said, as far as I'm concerned, the canonical one is Cameron winning. Um, yeah, so he, he is a winner of a previous season, and they should be, and the last season was his, was his story, pretty much. He was, like, the main character, and, you know, you think they'd take note of that, but I, I guess, I don't know, short-term memory or lack of viewing, not sure. So, anyway, the heroic hamsters have won the day, and it's time for the villainous vultures to vote. I also want to mention that an invincibility item was, he, was in the area, and Heather found it and hit it. Okay, now here comes the major twist. If you don't want to hear it, don't keep watching. Everyone votes for Alejandro, but the thing is, he stole the invisibility item from Heather. So, his vote is the only one that counts, and he voted for Heather, getting revenge on her for her treatment of him in the previous in. Total Drama World Tour. <laughs> Actually, he still hits on her after that, which is kind of funny, but it was a big shock to me, really. I didn't expect Heather to get the axe. I expected Cameron to be kind of shoot off quickly, or, yeah, even Alejandro. Um, but this was a big shock, and also he goes back to his regular walking instead of on his hands at, at the very end, which, unlike when he came out of the robot suit, is not played as overly dramatic. The, the people in the show gasp because they wouldn't know, but other than that, it's not played too too much. It's kind of ignored. What the shocker is is that Heather, uh, to one time almost Victor, another time Victor, so or almost Victor, depending on who you believe, um, is eliminated. And it's amazing to see the Queen of Mean just act so early, really, considering that this is going to be a full 26-episode show. So, yeah, that's that's pretty... That's pretty amazing. Um, and that was that was what really made the episode for me, because a lot of the episode is a little bit... It's only kind of okay, 
I mean, okay, I liked it, but it's only sort of okay. But this was what really made the episode for me, and I think this will make the episode for anybody watching it, even if you're not surprised now that you watched it and watched me and it's ruined for you. Uh, finally, one more thing to mention. Um, Mike hits himself on the head with a large rock to try to reset his brain, but he ends up trapping his Mike personality inside and bringing out the malevolent one. And also, Duncan mentions that he recognizes the tune that he whistles, which happens to be Black Swan, I think. Um, again, I'm, I'm still not really feeling this intimidated by the malevolent one, because he's not that... What? He's breaking people's stuff. So what? It's not that... It's not that villainous. <laughs> uh, but whatever. Um, that's got time to sort itself out. So overall impressions of this episode, decent enough. Not my favorite, but still decent enough. It's got some good jokes. It's got a great ending. Um, it, it, it was actually one of the few times I've been surprised. It was a twist that really surprised me. Um, in a good way. In a good way, because I wasn't angry about it. And yeah, so... It was a good episode. I'm wondering when we're going to get the the after show with all the losers coming coming out because I'd really like to see that see that pretty soon. Um yeah. But anyway, I can't wait to re re review uh the episode that aired this week. I can't re wait to catch up with Cora with um Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and tragically I will not be able to review any Beware the Batman because it has not aired yet, the new episode. Because, no, that's it. That's it. Just because. Your guess is as good as mine. I don't know. I, I have no idea. Suspense? Nah. <laughs>